Mr. Whipple, please don't squeeze the charmin. How many lifts does it take to get to the toot to roll better of a toothpick bar? I'm not going to try it. Where's the beef? You're listening to the Creative Leverage Podcast, and here's your host, Todd Kinley. Hey, Todd. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Good. How's it going? Good. <clears throat> do you get nervous before you do these? Uh, no. I mean, that's such a gift. One of the first events you did, and all the retailers and reps were there, mm-hmm. and Krypton was there, and you had to, and I could tell Jeff was nervous, you know, but you, you stood up in front of everybody and... Oh, <laughs> yeah. That stuff never really bothers me. I always feel like... Um, I think well, one preparation uh, experience and, um, you know, I think really those two things, I think the more, and the more you do it, the more comfortable you get doing it to collect your thoughts of, oh, it's like, oh, here's yeah. my four talking points and I'm just going to get these across. So Yeah. But you know, uh, Jeff didn't like doing that. No, he does not like talking in public. He never has. He no, gets very- and there are a lot of people that don't. I mean, I had to give a presentation in front of marketing executives and it was a global presentation and I was dreading it for weeks, you know, well, and Leslie was like, why that, are you putting yourself through that? And I'm like, cause I have to, I mean, I can't not yeah. do it. You know, you just got to push that through. Can be its own, yeah. That can be a little more nerve wracking. Cause it's like, all right, am I talking about stuff that everybody in this room knows a lot about in which case? Well, that was funny because I had given, yeah. or, or maybe interesting cause I'd given three presentations. That was a third one. The first one, I'm mm-hmm. like, I'll just read what I wrote. That ain't, I, I didn't like okay. that. That was in front of a bunch of yeah. sales reps. The second one um, was, I'll just do, you know, kind of topical things on post-it notes. I didn't like that either. Okay. So this one I did, I had, had a, you know, kind of a slide presentation, but it didn't have much information on it. I had some videos to play, but I just rehearsed okay. it. I just rehearsed yeah. it. And I rehearsed it I don't know, 20 different ways. So I didn't really know what I was going to say until I got up and, and then listening to the pre the previous speakers, I knew what to say. So that was much more relaxing. Yeah. You know, it's like going then to a tea box. Yeah. And like, is the wind coming at us or yeah. 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 The more comfortable I think and more committed you are to that process as well. You know what I mean? That's a big, yeah. that's a big deal as well, you know? So um, yeah, I mean, I think all that, um, it all plays a role. I think the more you do it though, I, you know, it's like in, uh, Isla school, they have to do a lot of public speaking. Uh, That's so early good. On. That's so good. And, you know, now that she's in, she just finished sixth grade and, you know, at the end, like when she had to do, um, and she wrote down some bullet points, but she got up in front of, you know, her entire class so fourth fifth and sixth graders and then all their parents and she talked for like three minutes you know to thank everybody but it was like it was well articulated she was confident she looked at people i mean she had a microphone you know i mean all that kind of stuff um and it's like yeah i told her i said the more you do stuff like that the the better the better you get the easier it gets um you know all that stuff just kind of um yeah you know, those- it just it, it, it and it's totally a differentiator, I think, you know, as you get older um, of, you know, maybe even why you might get, you know, a job, you know, um, oh, over no a question. different job. You know? All those basic things. Um, I, don't th- I think that's a basic thing that they should be teaching in schools, you know, much more common sense practices. Of course, you got to do, all, you know, the, the, the normal things you do in school, but the things they don't teach you, which yeah. which leads to the first question I want to ask you, are the things that that. Are, are so important that aren't taught. It's how to relate to people, how to present yourself, how to speak in front of, you know, in front of people, what you're trying to communicate. Because the, the first thing I want to ask you is, you know, you so embody that brand now, you know, and I, I hope this is a compliment because you've taken it to <laughs> <laughs> this, this brand universal to this, to this brand that is it is, you know, fashion forward. It feels innovative. It feels fresh. It feels communicative. It feels networking. It feels educational, you know, so much more than just a marketer, manufacturer of furniture. 
it, it's so much more than that. And and I think you represent that. You seem to encapsulate what the brand wants to be. How do you know you do that? From my observation, you do that. And, and as, I, as I think about some of our clients, the, the really good ones do that. Like, like they become the brand that then becomes the communication, which then reflects on what they say on a daily basis. It's a, yeah. I mean, I think a large part of that it's a, well, first of all, it's not just an individual. It's not just like me. Um, I, I, based on my role, do a lot of things that are forward facing obviously. And as a result of that, um, people might be hearing certain things from me a lot, but it's not, it's not like, it's just, you know, it's definitely not me, uh, by myself. We have a lot of people that contribute to making that happen. I think when I came in here eight years ago, you know, we had this clean slate and uh, a vision from, you know, Jeff Sheffer in terms of where he wanted to go. And I think, you know, Jeff's whole thing was, you know, given the looks that we offer, you know, approachable, casual, you know, elegant, um, you know, just a good fit for a lot of different things. We were just getting into the interior design business. I think we've tried to make all of those things kind of come to life in different ways uh, through, you know, our website, through our social, through our emails. Um, you know, certainly I think it's, it. I think no better place in terms of like what Janine and her team does inside the showroom. And we obviously work very closely with her and the team so that not only does it look great, but I think there's this feeling of, you know, Jeff always had the, you know, the mantra, if you will, we want to be the easiest company to do business with. And I think from that, I think you just think of things, well, what, you know, I always say it's the only store we own. So if it's, if it's our retail store, what kind of vibe do we want to be offering that fits to all those things that were kind of under Jeff's vision? And it's not just a static thing. I mean, I think we continue every six months, of course, we have to kind of pivot and tweak some things here and there. But I think that that foundational element of, you know, that casual approachable, I think you kind of feel that when you walk into the space. I think you feel that as you shop, we've tried to add things that make that shopping experience maybe a little easier. We've added different amenities like, you know, what we do in the cafe, uh, the learning center, this place of education and access. And we want to be, I think, you know, we're we've become kind of known at, at market as a hub of being able to offer people something like that. Um, you know, what we do in the designer's lounge with our partners there, um, you know, bringing different kind of things in there that are kind of fun and different and it becomes an experience. And I think that kind of goes back to the whole retail side in the sense that, Hey, if this is the only store you own, you don't want to just come in and shop. You want to come in and explore. Um, and I think those are things we've tried to do. So I think when when we get a chance to kind of talk about that, I think we want to try to hit on all of those things in terms of, you know, who we are and and what that feel from from us should be. And, you know, our hope is, is that that is a consistent feeling that people get when they do and in, interact with, you know, all those different touch points that we offer, including, you know, our sales reps, I think, who are you know, who do a great job and are, you know, some great people out there in the field, um, you know, because they're representing obviously the brand as they, um, you know, as they, as they come in and talk to, you know, the retail partners or, you know, design partners, uh, different events we go to across the country, you know, we try to replicate that feeling as, as best we can. So um, I, I think it, it's intentional that we try to do that, uh, but it's, and I try to think through, you know, what are things that, again, kind of go back to that initial vision? I think we continue to refine it. It's not something that, oh, we we did it and we're done. I think it's just a constant evolution of, you know, and part of that is I think just as designs uh, evolve and change and we get, you know, we refine certain things. I think it's, um, it, it's this feeling of this kind of, um, you know, constant kind of, um, you know, it's almost like a quest um, of of looking to try to continue to kind of better yourself. Uh, you know, we're forced to do that every six months in person, obviously. But I think, all right, we think about we think about all these things. How do they all kind of connect, and do they represent that kind of vision that we had initially of, you know, just this whole casual, approachable, and does it feel like the things that we do? Because that's what people come to us for. 
They don't come to us for opinions on various things that are happening around the world. Uh, they come to us for, you know, great, you know, styles, great, you know, value, great looks, how those fit into different projects or how do those fit into, you know, store partners. So I think that's, that's what we try to do. Um, that's what I've tried to do, uh, with our team. Um, and, um, you know, just trying to think through all those things that we do on a daily basis. Does it all, does it all kind of come back to that initial, I think, vision of hitting on? Cause I think it's, I think we've seen that that has proven successful as we've, as we've evolved, you know, as a brand. Yeah. The, um, I love, uh, culture Trump strategy. I love that line. And I, I feel like you guys, yeah, from Janine to Kayla to, um, and I, I forget his name, the furniture designer that came on board. Um, Shannon. Yeah, everybody you have seems to be on the same path. And, you know, in order to, to me, to order to do good branding, good marketing, it is a cultural thing, you know, and, and it is a taste level. It's a cultural thing that everybody has to be working towards. And it's, you know, uh, from the top to the bottom, you know, from communication wise to the product, everything has to communicate or connect. So it has to be a culture thing. And then, you know, you're kind of the tip of the sword, right? So you, you and the marketing are the first out the door, but everybody has to support that, you know, talk right. about what you think mm -hmm. the, the culture, cause I feel like, I feel like you guys really try from my perspective, you guys try hard to make that what you describe in the brand all work together. You know, is that something um, you guys, yeah, I think it's, yeah, I think everybody everybody has a role to play in achieving that vision, right? Um, across the entire company, from you know obviously what we do from a marketing communication standpoint to what we do um, in customer service in terms of how the phone might be answered or how an email might be responded to, or somebody that's trying to pay their bill or pay a balance uh, to what happens ultimately, you know, when they actually get the furniture, you know at the at the you know the point of delivery is that a, is that a good experience does it come out of the box the way that we wanted it to if there's a problem which you know we're not perfect um are we able to take care of that problem quickly um and then you know i always say i think i think being able to also um while our sales force is um a part of that brand story i think they're also one of our customers as well in in the sense of what we need to do to support you know basically, you know, their little business, if you will, within their respective territory. So I think that if, if everybody understands kind of the vision and, you know, I think it does influence behavior in terms of how you might approach different things and, and you shouldn't just let, you know, I, it's hard, uh, but you shouldn't just let kind of that whole, oh, well, that's just because, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Oh um, yeah. That, that's a, that's a, that's know. a killer. And agendas, yeah. separate so we, agendas we are killer. Yep. Yeah. So that, I think that really does start from, you know, the top and, and work its way through. And then ideally everybody within their respective role, and we all do have a role to play in terms of the outcome of how these things all work together and, and the success of, you know, uh, really the team, you know, kind of winning, if you will. Um, so I think if, we, if everybody kind of has that mindset, and I think, you know, in most cases they do, um, I think it does influence how hopefully the entire experience, um, you know, with engaging with us, whether that be in the showroom, whether that be, you know, through our uh, designer concierge service or our customer service team, or whether that be, you know, handling claims, which is, can be, you know, it's not fun. So it can be a little messy. So those are all things that um, I think we try really hard to ensure that you know, again, we're not perfect, but, um, you know, are we kind of, is there that feeling of, all right, it's approachable. I can talk to somebody They're They're paying attention. They're going to help me. They care. You know, I think that's a big thing as well. You know, they care about what, what they're doing. Um, and they want to make sure that, you know, we kind of come to a resolution that feels like, you know, that all makes sense. So, yeah, um, it, yeah. It feels like, uh, when you describe that, I'm reminded that, you know, we try to say, you can't just say, I don't like the color blue, you know, you, right. hard, hard opinions like that. You, you have to be able to back it up, say, I don't like blue because our competitor is blue. Right. You know, so right. if everybody is working towards the fun part of 
of creating something that is universally, to use the word, uh, good for your brand, you know, instead of protecting their own little dominions, right, or their own little kingdoms, uh, instead working for a greater good, then we'll benefit them. It, that, that's a mind, mindset that is super powerful because it does go to every part of your business. Um, mm -hmm. And then I think it, it yeah. ultimately leads to doing better marketing. Um, and Yeah. And I think, you know, I think to accomplish that, I think a, a big thing is communication internally. I think that's been challenged, of course, over the last couple of years with, you know, some of the, uh, you know, COVID issues and what have you and people working in different places that maybe didn't use to do that. And um, now maybe people working in different places all the time. So I think um, just, you know, communicating, um, whether that be things that we might push out, whether that be, you know, certain phone calls that need to take place. I think the more you can communicate and people understand kind of the why, um, then that should hopefully impact, okay, you know, what are we going to do about it? Uh, how are we going to, how are we going to execute? And so another thing it's nice to know, where, it's nice to know that, you know, okay, where am I going and why people, I think, you know, they want to know yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and I think the more they understand what that is, and again, kind of going back to that, the mission or the vision really of what we're trying to do, if everybody understands that and it's constantly reinforced, I think that does help, you know, with, you know, that level of, you know, high level, hopefully of execution. That's as, I, place. as you're talking and I think about your team, not just your marketing team, but your other teams, they, they're all like run very entrepreneurial spirited little mini businesses, you know, within mm -hmm. universal, yeah, I think that's a fair comment. you know, yeah. and, and they all have, they all want to please their customers, which is, you know, either sales or marketing or product development, you know, uh, internally, you know, almost like right. they're, they're creating what, you know, you're from a marketing standpoint, Janine creates in the showroom, what you need for the designers and retailers coming to market or what Sean needs for the salespeople. Right. So it's, it, it feels very, it feels very, from my standpoint, it's just a cool process, right? There, it's not, it's yeah. not, it's not, uh, it's not templated. It's very fluid. You know, it has a, an overarching mindset as you describe. Um, so I feel like that that's is a marketing director and is somebody who helps you do the marketing. You can't do the good do good marketing with with disconnections. You've got to have everything connecting in order to right. you do an email campaign. You're involving sales, you're involving showroom, you're involving product, you're involving specs, you're involving, you know, inventory. Customer you're service. touching every part of your business, you know, to do right. it correctly. To do it correctly. Right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Do yeah. you do you I'm fascinated with the mindset that you have? Um I'm I'm fascinated that that you just you just feel I feel like innately know what to do next, which is just a real gift. You know, uh, not, I, not, yeah, not a lot of people have that. So uh, I'm going to ask you, when do you do your strategic thinking? You know, and what's your process for that? Because you're always coming up with, hey, you know, we need to do put, pull this together. It'll get us, you know, more business because it'll talk to these this all this audience and you know in the Northeast or whatever it is. How, how do you do your strategic thinking? Well, yeah, I mean, part of it I think comes from obviously just the internal conversations that we have across department of well, where do we have of needs. Um, that needs some support from what we do from a communication standpoint. So whether that be, you know, um, you know, sales in different territories, sales as a whole, um, maybe it's certain things in, you know, customer service or it's certain things uh, in something that we need to execute in the showroom. I mean, I think my, like I, I tell new people, I hate complacency. Um, I just don't like it. I think you, I think the more you can always kind of be uh, thinking and, I don't really do that by myself. I think we we do that as a group. And hey, I was thinking about this based on a problem that has come up or an opportunity that's come kind of come up. Hey, what about this? And then, you know, we might uh, our team, our marketing team, we sit through and hey, okay, what about this? What about that? Or we might sit through with Janine and talk about different things. And then, you know, we talk to obviously, you know, your team as well about different things that are happening. Um, and I think that's kind of where we try to map out, you know, for maybe the next, you know, ideally we have a plan for the year, 
um, we have different goals for the year, obviously. Um, we have, we know we have this trade show that's happening every six months. So between all of that and then kind of a constant, you know, flow of communication via email and social and what have you, you know, we're, ha what are the things we need to be executing and talking about when, why, you know, how, um, and then, you know, kind of map that out. And then it doesn't mean we know the exact level of execution that's going to happen in six months or eight months from now, but we have, we know there's that thing or that event or a launch of something that we're, we're kind of putting the pieces together as to how that's all going to ultimately come together, how we're going to roll something like that out, how is it going to be supported, um, how, how is it going to, you know, be talked so you're very about, um, what are those things that we we need. Yeah. And I find that helps. And then, you know, I might from that just sit on my own and think through either different things I've done historically, um, things that I've read about, um, you know, Hey, how would that discernment if we did really something good. like that? I think your ability Thank to, you. to figure tried. out what's, you know, cause you'll, you'll, you'll end up in a very black and white kind of, it sounds like you, you have a lot of input, in your in your process lots lots of input you're collecting data collecting data collecting data and then you have to shift sift through it and say no this is good these are bad this is what we do this is what we wait on we tr i think it's easier when you get down to that at the end that things are a little more black and white because now now I mean, you just need to execute but I, that's a gift i'm believe me over my career uh, but people, part of that's just trial and error i mean you know I, i've been but I've you're leading a team. You're leading an agency and you're leading yeah. your team. You have to make those decisions. Yeah. And I feel like your discernment uh, is really good in your strategic thinking and process. Well, I appreciate that. I think part of that is a lot of experience. It's learning from a lot of different people over the course of you know my professional career. Um, it's seeing things that went well. It's seeing things that didn't go well. And, you know, just kind of filing that away. And, you know, when different things kind of come up, you're like, oh, right. Remember that? happened in 2006 and you know whatever you, you know so i've seen you have to to battle you know just the general consensus um of we've done always done it this way or this is just the way it's done elsewhere and you've had to kind of you know hold your position and hold your line and try to you know rationally argue and and then see it through and that's i've seen you have to battle you know, a few times. Um, and, and I think that's, yeah, I that's think, the good stuff. Well, it's also healthy, I think, internally that, you know, it's good to have, um, you want different points of view. I think you need different points of view to have a, not an argument, but just a dialect, you know, a dialogue between different departments and what have you. Um, because I think through that conversation, which is really what it is, um, you're going to learn about their point of view and how oh well that really throws some cold water on what we were what we were just thinking about but if we now with that information we pivot a little and we we can kind of come to a common ground that might achieve you know kind of where we wanted to go and why but but also there's you know there's certain needs that certain things just need to happen certain ways i think that's part of also on my end probably just um getting older and being more mature and not so headstrong on certain things because well, you're in the you, know, you, you realize well, that in my career i realized that this is not a sprint this is a marathon if you take right, one baby right. step and, every day they add up yep and i think that's also part of um yes it is it's it's it all of this stuff doesn't happen overnight i think and and i have um this year i mean i've been guilty of probably spreading um ourselves a little thin at the beginning of the year with too many different things happening in a very condensed period of time, which was extremely stressful um, and uh, probably took a, a toll on me <laughs> physically um, in many ways. But, um, you know, and I got through that and I remember talking to my wife and talking to our team and I'm like, all right, don't don't ever let me do that again. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. Not, I can't do oh, that yeah. again. Yeah, I do you that know? same like, thing. But, yeah. You know, to, like that was stupid. It's good to have and people on your team that can help monitor your your goal. Yeah. Yeah. Enthusiasm, if you will. Yeah, yeah. So I think, and, and that's just all part of, you know, that's all again, part of learning and some things, you know, it wasn't, you know, we didn't really 
intend for it to go that way. It just kind of, oh, we've got this perfect storm of great opportunities. And okay, we need to execute like crazy over the next 30 or 45 days. And then we're going to, you know, one so. of my favorite things Jeff, Jeff Sheffer said was <clears throat> we were trying to, we were thinking of a strategy. We'd locked down the strategy. We knew what our tactics were. And he said, all right, let's do it. But I reserve the right to change my mind. And I right. love that because it's fluid. You know, you know, they say, you know, a war strategy is thrown out the, as soon as the first bullet's fired. So you have to be able to right. kind of wiggle and waggle through the execution of a strategy, or you're not going to get to the really, really good stuff because you, like you said, you're going right. to find information along the way, which leads to my next question for you is I find also find you if I, <laughs> if I need any kind of golf equipment, or any kind of training <laughs> aid or any kind of coaching, you have researched those to a, no, a new level. Or, or I, I'm wearing a whoop because, you know, you introduced me to it, you know. So now I'm yeah. hooked for a couple of years on a whoop. But, uh, and I feel like you do that in your personal life and in your business and, and at Universal. Do you, do you feel like your, I don't know, your ability to seek out all the nuggets of information? Are you, do you feel like, do you like research and are you feeling, you know, your brain with the information in order to make a, a wise decision. Is that, is that something you, you do consciously or you, um, that's just what you well, like? Well, I think on certain things, I probably borderline obsessed <laughs> um, and maybe not in a healthy way with respect to golf. Um, I think on certain things, I'm just very interested in how can I get better at something? Um, how can I leverage? I don't have tons of free time. Uh, so how can I maximize the time I do have to be as efficient as possible and enjoy what I'm doing? And I really like to learn. Um, so I think that with different things like whoop, for instance, it was like, Oh, what is this? And then I'm like, this is kind of cool. It's like, okay. And then got more into it. And then I think I've got like eight people signed up for it, you know, just so based funny. on, um, I, I was yeah. going to mention and to you every morning, you know, that I found something called swing you, do you know what? Have you have you heard of that? Okay. Uh, you, uh, I have I've thought, thought about, about you I've because not, it, I've not dug into it. Yeah, because it, it's uh, it's very analytical yeah. about your swing. Uh, I mean, it takes all these these yeah, and I, information. Yeah, I think I like to learn with a lot of information, and then I'll I'll use like kind of the the whoop and golf analogy. So I mean, I love to learn, and the more technical and the more information to help with the understanding of why you should, you know, move a certain way or how to use the ground or different things like that. Now that said, uh, I kind of compartmentalize that to, okay, that's like kind of a practice mindset. And then there's a play mindset, which is totally different. It's more artistic. It's more just playing. It's more seeing, visualizing, executing on your vision as opposed to thinking about, you know, it's really hard to play really, really good golf. If you're thinking about, you know, positions and stuff like that, you know, that you hear that term playing golf swing versus playing golf. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I've been guilty of that for sure. But, um, you know, I think you kind of learn. So I, I like how you can learn all this stuff. You kind of execute it over here in this bucket. And then you kind of, you build a nice foundation that's going to help you go support you over here. And I think like with the whoop stuff, it's like, you know, I'm not like a health nut or anything like that, but I'm, I try to be healthy. And I think the older I've gotten, and the more I've had to travel and, you know, different things that add certain stress, it is interesting to kind of learn about how your body responds to that. It's interesting to see how your body responds to different factors that might be self-induced like alcohol yeah. or, you know, how much sleep do you need? You know, how should, you know, different things that you start trying and, you know, um, you know, numbers don't lie and you kind of learn about this. And again, it's just, it's a guide. It's not like the end be all for how you're going to live your life, but it's just kind of interesting to kind of, to see how those things can impact you. And then it's up to you if you want to make any changes, of course, you know what I mean? That's up, that's up to the individual. But, um, you know, I know I got my wife on it and she's, you know, hooked and we're always like, how'd you sleep? You know, how many wake events did you have? You know, so, um, you know, all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. My wife and I have this conversation all the time that there's, and, and we, we kind of do it. I don't, I don't think we've called it. We've like have a, a name or a hook for it, but there are these three buckets, right? There's this one bucket of um, like improv. They say how to, 
if you're if you're an improv artist, comedian, you know, actor, the you never say no. You always say mm-hmm. yes because if you say yes, it goes on and on and on. So the first bucket in in you know kind of what we do together is the collection of data. You know, and and you have to not yep. say no. You just more and more and more data, more and more and more data. You don't. You're not. You're not making decisions. You're collecting data because as soon as you stop collecting data, you've stopped, right? So it's it's then you have to make a decision based on the data. So when do, you know it's it's collecting all the data points, all the research, all the information. You know, uh, I, I know I like to have a long period of time where I'm collecting data. It's a little bit like. If you bought an, a new red, you know, car, right? You bought a new red BMW. All of a sudden, you're going to see a lot of red BMWs that you didn't see before you bought yours, right? So, if you're collecting data yeah, right. on something, and that's your mindset, it's going to start coming to you, you know. And so you start collecting it. At that, yeah. then you have to move that into a, you know, discernment, like figuring out what pieces of information you want to start putting together. Right. That's a second bucket. And then the third bucket is the execution. Right. What's the best execution for that? And and it, and it's, I feel some people get trapped in those three buckets going back and forth. Like, no, don't worry about execution yet. We're still concepting, you know, which we. Right. Oh, that's going to be too um, expensive. Well, we, we, let's just not even think about that. Yeah. Let's just. I think it just depends on like, what's the timeline, too? Yeah. Because if you have a timeline you have certain deadlines that you need to achieve. It's like, okay, we, we need to progress, right? Cause we have, we have a deliverable, we have a deadline, we have a, whatever it is, an event. Um, so I, I think kind of knowing those phases and mapping them out so people can feel like, okay, Hey, we're just going to, you know, all these ideas and this and that. And then it's like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, there's, kind of there, weed there's, certain things out. We're going to whittle these down to, okay, this is great. How do we fine tune them? Okay, great. And now we're going to, all right, start thinking about the executions of this, 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 this. Okay, great. And then, you know, ultimately you have the day of, you know, something is due. So yeah, that's the other fun part of working with you. And, and our, I know our team certainly appreciates it, that, that you get those buckets, you understand those buckets, you understand the language of creation you know, and that we can go to, yeah. and Hey, it's I think two in two that, days. Yeah, that, that, right. And those are two different mindsets, right? Like, Hey, we've had, we had a fire drill. It's due tomorrow. Mm-hmm. This is the decision versus something that's six months away. And I think that's just part of, uh, experience, you know, and, and having worked at a couple different places and, you know, getting exposure, um, you know, from a career standpoint and being around <clears throat> some really talented people, um, certainly early on in my career, um, and just kind of learning, you know, just almost by osmosis in some cases, you know, like, oh, okay, that's how that can work. So I think, I think your, <laughs> your career path has, has been, and I'm, I'm going to ask you how young marketing wannabes can, can end up successful and what, you know, what, what advice would you give them? But your career path, I think was almost perfect. Mm-hmm. If I could say that, because you had agency experience working at a couple agencies, you had corporate experience you tried you went and did some sales and now you are where you mm-hmm. are so you really had the inside and out of marketing so you you know you're not wondering what's behind the curtain at an agency you know what an age how an agency operates you know how they think because you think that way you know now um i think that's a real benefit um to both of us um do you would you have would you have chosen that path if you know if you i mean did you always want to be a marketing director so um i it's funny uh we were just at a um a friend uh our babysitter she just graduated high school and her sister just graduated college and i always joke around with people that graduate college so what do you want to do for the rest of your life you know um and um so when i I graduated college in 2001 and um, obviously some things happened that year that were uh, disrupted a number of things um, uh, that were very unfortunate. Uh, But when I was in college, um, the best job I ever had was caddying and um, I caddied at Cape Cod National Golf Club and it was uh, was awesome. I was the oldest caddy there. Um, The pro shop staff, the head pro, the assistant pro, they were all really great to me. 
Um, they let me bring friends over on Monday. They bought me beer. <laughs> um, you know, it was great. And, you know, you got paid in cash and you're outside all day and then you get to go play golf. So uh, probably the, maybe the greatest job I ever had. So um, through through caddying, I was introduced to a number of people. Um, and one of these individuals, his name is John Grady. Um, he worked for State Street Global Advisors at the time. And uh, through that, I got this internship, this investment bank. And um, it was on the sales side of things. And it was, um, you know, as an intern, you're, I was a sophomore. I think it was the winter of my sophomore year of college. And then I ended up interning over the summer, um, my June, my sophomore summer and then uh, junior summer of college uh, there. And it was fascinating. You know, it was like you learned a lot, you know, you're, um, you know, you're suiting up, you're going in and this is, you know, early 2000s. So, um, or no, this is the nineties actually. So, um, yeah, I remember actually working on a thing over the winter break for like Y2K, you know, oh, yeah. so everybody thought the world, you know, everything was, wasn't going to work the next day anyway. So, um, through that experience though, as I was, I was majoring in marketing in college, um, and, um, I, I really enjoyed some of the things I was learning and then I hadn't really had a chance to apply them. So, um, I remember it was the last, it was my senior year of college. I, uh, my third grade teacher, Mrs. Landfield lived really close to us and her husband, uh, Doug had an agency that, um, they worked on a lot of dot com business and stuff. They were based in Lexington, Massachusetts. They also did some stuff with New Balance and Bose. And I got to work there for four weeks over winter break and it was awesome. And I was like, you're sorry. hooked. Um, so I got to work there for four weeks over winter break and I loved every minute of it. And I remember I was actually like, uh, terrified to tell, uh, Mr. Grady, John Grady, that, hey, I'm not going to take this job at this investment bank. I'm going to instead take this job at this ad agency. And, you know, he was very encouraging, you know, good luck. And then um, and then 9-11 happened. And mm -hmm. a lot of at the time, a lot of the dot com business that this agency had uh, kind of went away. And um, as a result of that, I no longer had a job. So um I was kind of at that point, um, you know, you say like, oh, you had this perfect career path. I don't think there is such a thing as a perfect career path because <laughs> in many cases, especially when you're young, you have needs, um, you know, which is I think obviously, you know, you want to learn, you need to make money. Um, you don't necessarily want to do, I think you need to be careful. I think a lot of people, uh, young people that we meet now have this high expectation of maybe what they should be making versus yeah. what they need to learn. And I remember one thing that Mr. Grady always said was, you know, college just teaches you how to learn. You know, you're never going to walk into a job and know what to do. And he's right. You know, you're not because every company has different ways of kind of doing things. But are you open enough to take in that information, process that information and then be able to, you know, execute? And obviously, when you're young and up and coming, you're in a role where maybe more of an execution role as opposed to a strategy role, you know, and that's how you learn and you get exposure to different things, but you're, you're learning. So I didn't have a job, um, and then I ended up taking a um, a stipend internship at the Burris Agency in Greensboro for three months. I won't tell you how much they paid me, but it wasn't a lot. But I did it because I'm like, okay, I'm going to get more experience, and hopefully they're going to hire me. Well, they didn't hire me at the end, which I was pretty devastated about. That's really um, funny. But I I'm yeah. sure Mark would want to do that over. <laughs> well, they ended up hiring me later, so I mean, okay. I think it, it worked out in that sense. But I um. I did the internship. Uh, they worked a lot in home furnishings and golf. I got great experience. It was a small group of, you know, very talented people that did a lot of different things. Um, the internship ended and then I took a job uh, at Mullen, um, the Mullen agency, which uh, ironically enough had offices in Boston, had offices in Winston and had just won Wachovia Bank when Wachovia was a bank. Um, so I got to go over and work there and I was there for almost two years um, and, you know, got exposure to a lot of different things. And um, it was a great group of people. It was a, a larger company. There was more younger people. It was fun. Um, you got to do a lot of different things in an account executive role. And then um, I got a call one day from Mark about, hey, we want, we want you to come back huge opportunity for me. Um, and, um, I, I was so excited to take it. And I remember, um, 
I was there for a week and then they lost the account that they hired me to work on. Um, and I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to lose my job. <laughs> I just left. And, um, they didn't, they, we, we pivoted and we were able to, uh, get past that. And that was an interesting thing to see as a young person, like, okay, wait a second, mm -hmm. this is going to be a little different than, you know, kind of what you thought. And, um, it was a very small group, so it was very hands-on and, and, you know, I always say, you know, anybody would do anything there, you know, you just, yeah. Hey, we need help doing this. You're going to do this. And that's what I tell, you know, when people come to my team, it's like, look at market, if we need somebody to help take out the trash, nobody's good. Nobody's too good to do anything. You know, you may have a role, but you know, in some cases, all hands on deck and this means, you know, different things. So I was at Burris for almost seven years, I think. And, um, it was, it was great. And that was the longest I'd ever worked anywhere until now at Universal. So I've actually, uh, surpassed that. So, but I learned a ton and then through that experience, got hired by one of our clients, um, was there for three years in a director role. I learned a ton there as well, you know, and it was interesting to kind of go from being, um, you know, having them as a client to being an employee, it was a very different, different thing. And there was a lot of challenges at that time happening, but, um, and at the time I didn't think about it this way, but I think looking back, it was probably one of the best things I ever did because I learned an awful lot and the team of people, um, around there, there were some tons of smart people. And I think in some cases you, with a lot of great ideas. Um, but, um, you know, in some cases, the level of execution, um, in some cases outside of our control, um, it just didn't work out. So I left there, went to work for the golf channel, uh, in sales, was there for almost two years, was traveling a lot and realized I didn't really like sales. It was not really, that process was not for me. I, I liked parts of it and parts of it I didn't like, but it, it was a tremendous learning experience. And I think, um, when Jeff Sheffer called me out of the blue one day to take this job, I was like, oh, I'm never going to work in furniture again. I wouldn't do that, you know? And then, um, you know, I ended up kind of, uh, rationalizing with myself and my family of this actually made a lot more sense. And there was this great blank slate that we had here, but all those things that I kind of learned along the way, I think really played a very important role for me coming into, uh, universal in the sense of having that sales background, knowing, okay, the best idea in the world, if it can't be executed, then it's really not that great of an idea. Um, you know, some of the things that happened at Stanley Furniture when I was there, you know, good and bad, just having that experience from, okay, navigating certain things. Okay. Being aware of that, the experience I had at, at Burris getting to do a lot of different things in a lot of different categories was huge in terms of like laying a foundation for, you know, different things, as well as just this whole thing of learning how to, you know, communicate and, um, you know, navigate certain relationships with clients at the time or, you know, partners or outside vendors, different things like that, you know, and kind of create kind of this network of, okay, here's how we're going to do different things. So I think when I came here, I felt like all of that stuff uh, and all that experience that I had really prepared me um, to come in and actually, all right, I've and, and then, you know, I think Jeff having a vision for here's, we need help and here's where we want to go. And it was literally this blank slate. So it was almost like, okay, we could try some things. They're not all going to be perfect. Um, and I think, you know, through, I remember the early conversations that we had with regard to the universal brand, it was like, so why did you guys do this? And what happened here? And, you know, just trying to figure that out and untie some things as well as, you know, just kind of reset some things internally, um, you know, it's really been, it's been a lot of fun, honestly, you know, it's been, it, it has been a ton of fun. And I think, um, the experiences that I've had here over eight years, um, continuing to learn, uh, get exposure to things that I never thought I'd really be involved in. Um, and then, you know, getting this whole experience on the interior design side of which I had a little perspective at Stanley, but very, very different and just kind of learning, you know, meeting some amazing people, uh, getting to do some really fun things, but just this whole, I mean, it's a very tight knit community. Um, and I think, um, you know, having, you know, talking again about how we've tried to position ourselves in the marketplace of being, you know, kind of that, you know, accessible, approachable, um, you know, and I think we try to hold true to that. And a lot of that is just based on all these conversations. And for me, all of this, you know, it's kind of crazy. I, I, I'm like, I'm getting old. So, um, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I have this, I do, I have this nice bucket of experience that at you, you know, that's a long way of answering the question that you asked, but 
I, at the time in certain roles, I didn't think things were so perfect. <laughs> um, I think looking back at it now from where I sit, I feel like, man, I'm really lucky. I, and in some cases I put myself out there in some of these situations to try some things and, um, you know, it wasn't perfect by any stretch, but man, did I learn a lot. And it really helped me, I think, with where I wanted to go. And and I think also for me personally, having this vision of, okay, I didn't always know what I wanted to do. Um, um, I think I, I wanted it to be in probably a marketing communication role. And I probably didn't really appreciate and know that until I was actually in my sales role at Golf Channel where I learned, okay, I now I, I think I kind of know what I want to do. Um, and it's this. How I do I go the- do that? One of the fun things you you mentioned was was early when you had the internship you 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 were you gravitated towards the agency side like the creative side the marketing side you know that yeah you, you just it yeah, felt it felt it connected with you you got energy from it yes yeah it was fun it just I I liked I liked having uh, what I loved about, I think the agency side is you get to learn a lot, a lot, you get to learn a lot about a lot of different businesses. Um, you know, some are very related. And I think what you learn is that, you know, from a marketing communication standpoint, you know, there's a lot of things that can be related from one industry to the next, because they're not really all that different, even though they do very different things. Um, and I love that process of coming up with an idea and seeing an idea kind of come to fruition and executing an idea and, you know, not necessarily like, not just see, like seeing your ad in a magazine. I mean, that was kind of cool early on, but now it's like, oh, seeing, you know, your ad, your digital play, your social play, the event you had, you know, what happens after the event and all this content that you create. And, you know, I mean, it's changed a lot over a very short period of time and how, you know, brands are also now not just, you know, they're not just advertising, you know, they're creating content and every brand is almost kind of becoming a storyteller in some way, shape or form and how that can really shape how they connect with um, different audiences uh, and customers or internal people. Um, You know, I think all those things, you know, play a role and it's happening. It's happening so fast. I mean, I I think some of these things are. I was going to ask you about AI. And and yeah, I mean, this chat GPT stuff. It is insane. Yeah, it is insane. It's a little scary. My daughter talking about NFTs. She's twelve. Oh, no. You know, I mean, it's like, do we need those? I yeah. don't know. Well, Maybe uh, we do before we before we get into that, I, I, I want to ask you something that you know we both worked at at Burris, and I'd worked at other agencies before starting Crowbar. But what I loved about about what Mark created at Burris was was this idea that that we could take a smaller company, you know, a, a, a company that was second or third or even fourth in their marketplace and and through the marketing and the strategy actually see them move up you know and see them Mm -hmm. grow and 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 focus on you know you're talking directly to the president you're talking directly to the entrepreneur you're talking directly to the head of sales you're talking directly to manufacturing you get to craft all the communication to make, and I feel like that's what we've got now, which is so exciting. You know, and when you left right. the Golf Channel and went, you know, came to Universal, you know that 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 was an opportunity for us both to do that. You know, and can yes. you, yes. and and it and and all the experiences we've had at, at all the other agencies at Burris with our other jobs, we now get to get to to execute that, and and our teams get to execute it, and and it is so fulfilling. I think to be able to do that because so many people rely on us doing it successfully. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, you know, I think the thing, if, I mean, I think one of the biggest things I learned uh, from Mark and, um, you know, getting the experience and exposure that I had at the Burris agency was just, you know, accountability, you know, and I think that um, that's a big, big deal, no matter where it was a small, small group of people. And, you know, I think like your team today is not large, you know, our team is not very large and it's like, Hey, everybody's going to own kind of this area and, you know, you really, you own it, you know what I mean? And I think, um, you know, when you need help, you need to let us know what you need, but, you know, we need you to own that and, you know, be responsible for whatever that little area is. And then how does that then play into all the things that we're doing? Um, But I think um, it's a lot of fun. I think there's some pressure associated with that to perform at a high level. Um, And then I kind of goes back to, and that's why, you know, you can't get complacent, nope. you know, you gotta, 
you know, you have to keep thinking about kind of what's next. And there is so many things that are happening with what's next with regard to technology and, um, you know, different things that are, you know, with social and stuff that, you there's know, a, influencer marketing and I mean, yeah. all this stuff that's and happening, AI, which we'll it's talk all about happening. And it's like, yeah. And, and you can get really kind of like, oh, whoa, you know, overwhelmed. So it's like, okay, well, you know, you also can't do everything. So mm-hmm. what can you do really, really well and execute at a really high level? And, and to your point, you know, kind of continue to advance and move things forward. And, you know, how does that relate back? Cause there's nothing worse than trying to do a lot of things and not doing anything very well. Yeah, so. there, There's a, I ran into somebody that is kind of an old colleague at market and they were talking about our growth at crowbar and she said you know in the book good to great which is you know I, I, I love that book but it talks about growing and plateauing and then growing again and plateauing which i'd forgotten until she mentioned it but even in a in a as as we develop the brand universal we've got to keep doing that we've got to keep growing the next step and then and then making right. sure it works and then grow the next step and make sure it works right so if you continually do that, then eventually you're going to get your goals of growth, you know? Um, yep. So, yeah. And I think that's where it's like, again, that communication and the back and forth we have with your team is that if we don't have that level of trust and communication with your team, you know, you don't know, you're not mind readers. So I think that's kind of where for us to be able to, you know, communicate the challenges and the opportunities and the plan. And here's what's happening over the next three to six months. And here's where we need help. And Hey, we need you, we need ideas on this, you know, or we need help with this. Um, it allows us to be focused and, um, you know, I think really, um, ensure that we're maximizing everybody's time and, um, you know, we're making progress on the things that are important and people aren't just out there coming up with ideas that don't really okay, that's great, but it's not relevant right now. You know, that's the other thing I think, um, you know, just because it is a small group of people um, executing a lot, you know, there's a lot of work happening. Yeah. One of the things that makes uh, that I enjoy our relationship is that, that, you know, our team, our goal is to make you guys successful, make you successful. So we, we try to we try to not only just listen, we hope, I hope we were doing this, we're listening to you, what you need, but then we're, we're nervous trying to give you things you might not be asking for, you know, so we want to yeah. make sure that we're, we're doing those two things at the same time, but it's fun mm-hmm. just helping you achieve the goals that you and your team have come, have come up with, you know? Um, so I, I really appreciate that part. Um, I didn't want to ask you about AI. I, I, you can't go on social media without seeing the crazy stuff that AI is doing. You know, I know that a lot of our yeah. 3d work, AI has been able to fill in the blanks of, you know, cr- adding dust to light coming in windows when we create room scenes and things like that, you know. Um, but the things that it's doing in Photoshop uh, and, you know, I, I don't know yet how it's, it's, it's going to evolve. I remember when I was in advertising when Apple computers started infiltrating our industry. Right. So they were, everybody was pretty sure that creative directors and art directors were going away. Right. But I think what happens is you just evolve yep. into a more defined role. You know, you, you, it's a, it's a, it will be much more of a, of a collaboration with clients to, to quickly get the information and the assets that AI can help you with, but somebody has to help understand and put that together in all the pieces. But the, the question I have for you is what have you seen on your side that AI is maybe helping you with or, or changing? If you like, I know you love um, your research. What are you finding? Yeah, I, I think that it has the opportunity to assist with some of the things from photography. Um, I think definitely on the copywriting side or SEO side, um, it's kind of crazy actually like it's, yeah it's, it's, it's we've you been can used- just if you imagine it you can do it i mean it's like where do we yeah, want where, and- where do we want to start <laughs> plugging in ai and what makes right sense? right um i know we're we're testing some things as it relates to uh like online chat from a customer service standpoint on the website and how that would you know work um so i think it has i mean i think it can really support like a lean and mean team 
with making some more efficient if you know where you want to go and why, you know what I mean? Some of the stuff is really cool, but I don't know if it, you know, it's like you need to hone in on, okay, why is it cool for us? So um, I think that's a big thing to kind of figure out. And I, I can only assume it's just going to get better and better. I don't know if it makes certain people replaceable. Um, I think, again, I think it probably helps make somebody more efficient. I think well, it's really, even that's over, at least how even when we went uh, remote, we had to learn, you know, several new programs, new ways to work, new right. systems. So we're kind of like, it, it, it's just almost in our DNA now that, that yep. we're starting to plug in all that, you know, into our daily, you know, we, we do, we retouch something, we're using AI, you know, we're creating content, yeah. we're using AI, you know, so it, it's just, it's just like if you're an artist and somebody comes out, you're an oral painter and somebody comes out with a new brush, you're going to try it. You know, it's just that right. simple, right? So it's just tools to create the marketing that leads to what we talked about earlier, which was the 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 culture and the and the direction that, that you guys are creating. But um, yeah, so this has been great, man. I really appreciate it. So thanks for yeah, sharing all your. Hopefully it was helpful. <laughs> it really was, um, and I, I've been I've been wanting to do this for a while. Um, it's been so much fun seeing you guys grow. You know, you've taken the designer business into uh, into another level with that new building downtown um you know it's just it's been a lot of fun and i love all the work that we're doing together so hopefully we can we can continue to to keep up with you and grow with you but um, um well we you know we appreciate everybody's uh you know i think it's it's kind of crazy how fast uh for me at least eight years have kind of gone by i was kind of shocked when, when you said eight years because i still feel like it's yeah. three years I'm yeah, sure. it's really um, it's a little intimidating, actually. But I think when when we think about, um, you know, kind of where we started and where we are now, uh, you know, we've come a long way. And I think that's what I think is really exciting about this, I think, foundation that we've kind of been able to create, um, you know, from a communication and brand standpoint to where, you know, OK, we're you know, we're on the map now. OK, so what do, now what do we do? You know, I think that's kind of um, it's really exciting. You know, it's a, it's it's kind of what we want. So um, and, um, you know, I know we do uh, an awful lot uh, and have done an awful lot in a short period of time. But I think I'm always really pleased that the um, you know, I think this the level of execution and thinking that goes into the things that we you know, that we put out there. And um, I think it it all for the most part, I think really does feel you know, the right way. And, and I think we continue to refine, you know, what that, what that is. And, um, it's exciting. It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And and again, really appreciate it. But, um, so thank you very much. And, uh, thank you. Todd. I'll look forward to the next production meeting. Uh, excellent. All right. Thanks, Neil. Thanks.